start by preparing tiramisu because this needs to be needs to stay in the fridge and it's better if we do it uh, the longest so it's better if we do it in advance um, and then we will pass then on to the main dish uh, and prepare that later so that after when it's ready you those preparing it you can put it in the free in the in the oven or if you're having it tonight which i guess you do you can just put it uh, with some uh, cellophane in the fridge and, um, and, and then put it in the oven tonight. Um, uh, so for practical reason, let's say we usually start from the tiramisu because we do less mess than with the pork fish. So the, before we start, um, the pork fish, it's, uh, it's, um, it's our famous, uh, most famous dish, I think. So in, in, with, with guests uh, that come to stay with us and join our cooking classes, like the highlight, <laughs> one of the best recipes uh, that they, they have mentioned during this day. And so we called it pork fish, but it's um, actually the Italian name, it's another one. I will share it with you in the description, but it's maiale in crosta. Maiale stands for pork and in crosta it's in a cross, so pork in a cross, because as you will see, we will put the pork into the baguette. But in our family, my grandmother liked to call it pork fish because, well, she was a, a funny lady. And um, because she, she thought that when the preparation was all ready, the baguette with the piece of pork inside uh, would open up a little bit on the edges and it would look like a fish who had eaten a pork. So that's why we call it the pork fish. <laughs> which is um yeah just making uh precising that it's not the italian name so pork fish is really only our family calling it like that um okay so we can move to the tiramisu which is a very famous uh, italian uh, dessert you of course have uh, heard of it because it's famous everywhere and um you might find also alternative recipes so i've made uh one that uh i thought is the best, let's say, that I've, I've, I've been practicing for many years and I've, I think I finally, uh, finally found the one that I prefer. So I hope you will like it. And so we can start. I'll revise the ingredients first and then uh, we can begin to, to mix the things together. So we have three eggs. Eggs, if you, ca if you can find them fresh, it's always better. So if you have a, like a local farmer that can give you fresh eggs, it's the best because this, this uh, um, preparation is not cooked. It's just gonna stay in the fridge and kept in the fridge. But uh, so if you can find uh, free range and uh, let's say local eggs, uh, it's, it's always uh, the best. Then we have sugar, which should be 150 grams. Please, Jen, help me with conversions. <laughs> if I said you... One cup. One cup, perfect. Then we should have 500 grams of mascarpone cheese. And the lady fingers, I have a full box just in case. And then some coffee, which I have referred to 100 milliliters. Uh, um, but we might need more as we might need less. So let's see, because uh, it depends on the size of your lady fingers. It depends how much you soak them, even if you shouldn't soak them for too long but we'll get to that later. So we can start with our eggs. We need two bowls um, and we will split the yolks with the whites. And for the whites, because they have to be whipped and, and be very firm, uh, it's preferable to have an iron uh, bowl if you have it. If not, it's no problem. But the iron will help, let's say the, the, the stain will help uh, the process, let's say, uh, and it's better. Um, and then a bigger one, because this is where we will actually merge all the cream and have all the cream afterwards, so it has to be quite large. So we simply begin by separating the yolks and the whites. So open the egg in the yolk, in the yolk bowl and then put the, the, the yolk in the other one, okay? So I'll show you and I'll start. So it's important not to have the whites contaminated by the yolk. Okay, so they have to be well separated. It doesn't matter if the white goes, if a little bit of the white goes into the yolk, but it's not good the other way around. Okay. 
So if you're ready with your yolks, now you can mix in the, the sugar, okay? So this has to become a very uh, thick cream, okay? So we have to mix the two together to have a very thick cream. You should have a very smooth cream, yellow, very yellow cream. And I'll show you in a sec. It's almost like a paste. Yeah, exactly. Not a cream, you're right. A, more a paste. Yes, yes. So like this. See, it's, it's quite thick. Yep. Yep. Okay? Yep. But very, very yellow, okay? It has to be very well mixed up. It's not actually, um, in Italy, except for tiramisu, some people use it um, not really not really as a cheese, like we don't uh, eat it on the table, like, I don't know, uh, like uh, French cheese or a pecorino or something like that. We mainly use it for cooking and it can be used either salt in salt recipes, salty recipes or sweet recipes. Um, but I think it's vastly used only for making uh, tiramisu. <laughs> <laughs> so you can mix that in as well. You Um, so you should have, um, I'm not sure you can see it clearly, uh, this light thing, it's uh, ah, making me crazy. Can you see it? It's um, cream, okay? Yeah. So the, uh, don't judge really the color from the camera because of the lights, it's not, but it's yellowish, be, between yellow and white. Anyway, the consistency is the most important. Um, so we set this aside one sec, and now the most important part, we have to whisk the whites. So if you're ready with the whites, um, a little trick to have them to stay very firm because we need it to be super firm. I mean, you have to flip the, the, the bowl and they have to stay, that they, they don't have to fall. Um, so you can also use a pinch of salt. It's, a, it's like a trick. Uh, so we don't put any sugar here, but it's in, a, a pinch of salt won't taste anything, but it helps uh, the, the white to stay uh, to, to stay firmer, let's say. Okay, so it's important that this stage is well um, done carefully, let's say. So you see how this really, it's very firm. It doesn't move. Perfect. So now we'll start, you need, um, you can use a la spatula like this, or also the, the risk is fine. Uh, either way, really. Um, because we important with the with the whites is that they're fold into the cream. You don't have to mix it straight away. Uh, so if you're using, I'll show you with the with the risk that I don't like, but it gives you the idea. So if you put some with a spoon, if you put some in, instead of just mixing it with this, you can fold it up like this and let it drop. Because the thing is that the the whites they have to Let's say we say in Italian we say breathe. They have to take air in, otherwise they'll drop again. And so doing this, once it, you, you take up a little bit of the of the mascarpone cream, and you gradually mix it. Otherwise, with the with the um, spatula, you can simply fold it, and it's basically the same movement. It's the time of actually making it. <laughs> We're there. So, uh, important uh, thing that I've also recently um, improved about my tiramisu. So, the, I'm not sure about your lady fingers, but in Italy, the lady fingers have one side with sugar and the bottom side is without sugar. Uh, they're pretty hard here. They're okay. hard biscuits. Uh, you have uh, to soak the, the biscuit only on one side and one side only and very quick. Okay, so before we do that, we lay uh... Okay, so are you are you ready? I think so. I have the layer of Yeah, um, yeah just a, a thin a thin layer. Yeah, so now so do it very quick on one side only and then you place it onto your cream uh, on the um, on the dish, uh, we have a round one. It's a bit of a challenge, but it's it's fun. You have to place them one next to the other. So 
So they have to be tied together. So there's, there shouldn't be any space between one biscuit and one biscuit line and the other line. So they should be all tied together, okay? They have to be a uniform layer. And so one side only of the, 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 the biscuit. Yep. Am I using, am I? Okay, so here I'm just break, basically breaking it to fit into the dish. So now <clears throat> we have to put a layer of cream that it's about one centimeter, like okay. this, this much, okay, on top. And then we'll start laying the biscuits again. Okay. I've got the second layer or the, the top layer of, of the cheese. And then so, yeah, normally we do two layers. So you can decide if you want to do another one and to make it thicker or to do just this. And this is the final result, let's say. Okay. And so the, the last um, step, um, so this now goes in the fridge for at least four hours. So if you're having it tonight for you, it's perfect. Uh, when you take it out of the fridge tonight, you, you just spread some cocoa powder on top yeah. and, and you serve it. That's it. Now in the fridge, um, you, if you can, it would be best to cover it. Okay. So I'll check on what, everything that we need. So, uh, uh, we should have two baguettes, uh, and then we have we should have sage, yep. uh, rosemary, and thyme if you could find it. Yep. And garlic. Yep. Then I'll already move in the salt and pepper because usually I always forget <laughs> in the preparation I always forget the salt and pepper. So let's remember by placing it here. And then I've prepared an onion if you want, but you can also use the garlic for the potatoes so to put in the in the in the oven dish and and then we have our fillet and bacon so the bacon should look something like this it's raw and okay so let's start by preparing the bread so i'm i have as you can see pretty thin baguette so for for Suzanne, Hillary and, and Deb uh, this dish is not only good when you have it the same day so after preparing it but it's also very good the day after so I'll show you with one and you can just uh, do it so sorry wrong knife so you you open the baguette in two so you cut it in, in half from the side huh? you go. So it doesn't really matter if your if your baguette breaks in two, but it's be better would be better not to. So to keep it as a as a full piece, let's say, but divide it in two from the half, like this, okay? okay. So once you've done that, we remove the the um, uh, I forgot the name. The bread. Uh, yeah, the bread from inside. You said just simply say bread. Okay, thank you. <laughs> right so we're just making the place to, to put the meat so don't worry to scoop it off too much uh, and so now we're pre basically mixing all the spices together and then we'll chop them we have to uh, chop them very finely uh, so even the even your rosemary uh, you have to take the stem off so so um, Jen we're both chopping which is it's fabulous, it's fine. We need okay. to add the garlic as well. So now, 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 uh, you have a smaller cutting board, that's good. So put it one second to the side, because we have to do another, operation 
another few before we can use this. Uh, so let's do the first one, which is, um, do you have an eight pounder? A what? Oh, yeah. An eight pounder? Good. Okay. So your, um, you should use it uh, to pound your bacon because our bacon, it's uh, a little thick, okay, which is fine, but we have to make it um, a lot thinner than this and softer as well because this has to, has to wrap the bread. Pounding the meat doesn't only make it thinner, but also makes it a lot softer. So this was, let's say, the slice before, and this is the slice after, okay? I have pork loin like this, which is uh, very short and very thick. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I'm, I'm cutting it in, in smaller pieces so that I can adjust it better. You take your uh, pork loin and you completely wrap it, you, sorry, you actually um, um, put all the herbs on top of it. And we say even slightly uh, slapping it. So you press with your hands as well to make sure they stick. So it doesn't have to be completely covered. I mean, there doesn't have to be a full layer like this. It's important that you make the excess to fall off. It has to be well seasoned, let's say, but not complete. The, 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 the layer doesn't have to be too thick. Otherwise, it can be bitter, but it has to be well seasoned. So if you see parts, for example, of the meat that are uh, still pink, so not uh, seasoned enough, you, you keep uh, adding a little bit of the herbs and you, you help with your fingers to stick to, for the herbs to stick to it, okay? You can place your bread in front of you. Let's not forget salt and pepper, it's coming. But first we put a little bit of olive oil on our, let's say on our bread, just a little bit. Doesn't have to be too much. And then you place your loins inside. So as you see, I've put multiple places, but it's more or less, let's say even, okay? And then salt and pepper. So I'll prepare the, um, the other one and then we can, we can um, finish both at the same time. So this, this should be the final result. So you have a huge sandwich <laughs> stuff with your loin, okay? okay. All right, Are so you? we're almost there. Except that we miss the potatoes. The potato is the easiest part. Mm -hmm. So to this point, you basically have to make sure that you wrap your, your baguette entirely. So I'll show you closer how it should be, but you overlap a little bit one of the slices and then keep, let's say, going Now, the, the tidying part, it's, it's also kind of interesting because it's usually also how the butcher here ties the salami. So you take the string and more or less, uh, if it's more than what we need, we can cut it off. But we count about uh, three times and a half the length of our, of our um, uh, baguette, sorry. So one, two, three, let's say four to make it sure, okay? Then you take one side of your baguette and you make the first knot so that you secure, let's say, the, the string onto the, to the, 
to the baguette. Sorry, I'm uh, I'm starting to lose the words, the wording. So let me know when you're ready, and let me know if you can see me, because otherwise I'll I'll show you again closer. Okay. So holding holding your baguette in your hand. So I'm 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 right hand. So the left hand, the the big thumb, is holding. Let's say apart from the knot this much is holding the string okay like yeah. this i'm holding it i go around the baguette still holding the string on the other side i pass the string underneath can you see and yes. then sorry i have to put it back down still holding it i tie it you have to pull okay the, the the string has to become tight to the to the baguette. So if you want, I come closer and, and do it again. I, I do it like a slow motion movement kind of thing. Do you, want me, do you want me to come closer? What kind of spacing do we want uh, between the knots? More or the... less, more or less is like this much. Okay. From the first knot to where I tie it again, it's uh it's about this distance it, it depends on you really it doesn't really matter uh but we're help this of course helps uh, everything to stay together including the bacon uh, so a regular distance and now i'll come closer to show you again so i hold it with my hand well Im imagine that i'm uh, on, a, on, a, on a board so with my thumb i hold it here i go all the way around I come back to the front and pass this underneath. You see? Yep. Okay. And then once you've done that, well, I have my finger also. <laughs> you kind of, without releasing it, you pull. So when you finish and you get to the other end with your knot, make sure you leave a little bit, a little piece of the string so that you can lift it up like this. This will be use, useful for when this is in the oven to turn it around so that you don't get burned. Okay? Good. It's not necessary, but it's like, um, it's a bit for decoration. So again, it's not really vital. But if you want, you can place a piece of your rosemary on top. So by, by uh, actually fi fixing it onto the string. Like this, okay? So if you're placing it onto your dish, put a bit of oil on the bottom. Uh, on the pan? Yeah. Oh, on the pan? Yeah. Okay. So I've dressed the potatoes and now I'm putting a generous, as we are Italians like that, <laughs> a generous, um, uh, you know, olive oil on top of everything. Okay. And this is ready to go in the oven. I hope you enjoyed <laughs> all the preparation. Oh, I'm so excited for dinner tonight. Do, do you have, um, <laughs> you check the internal temperature of the meat when you're cooking before, to know Yes, when I do. Yes, I do. Good question. Yes, um, to, tell you, to tell you in Fahrenheit, um, so it has to be, um, pork has to be 75. So for you, it would be 170. Okay, perfect. It doesn't have to be more than that, because if it's more than it's too dry. Um, but um, it's, it's, it should be, uh, yeah, 75, let's say um, uh, 170, 190 maximum. Okay. Not more, okay, if you have a thermometer. And as I told you, it's, it should be around 40 minutes. Uh, about, after about 20, you can, you can turn it around, turn it over, flip it over, so that also the other part of the bacon can stay on top. Um, and of course the potatoes, once in a while you can adjust them, uh, but it should take about 40 minutes. And um, so 
Uh, I won't say anything, Harry. I will be in touch with you uh, the day after tomorrow because, again, it's bad luck. But I was very happy to to do this for you for your birthday. And so, yeah, let me know, okay? Yeah, <laughs> you, you share much. your thoughts and your opinion about uh, the overall preparation. <laughs> we'll send you some pictures tonight. You'll get them tomorrow. Okay. Time, but okay. Thank good. You. Good. Thank good. you very much. It was nice, nice to meet you. you. Same, same, madam, and enjoy, enjoy your, your, your meat, your pork fish. Ciao, guys. <laughs> Ciao, everyone. It was very nice. Ciao. Bye.